Code review is one of the most tedious and time-consuming tasks in any large-scale product or in any organization. So longer and manual code review cycle slows down hot fixes, chokes up the release cycle. For developers, this job is a huge context switching problem. And then there are other challenges like in many cases, code review becomes a rubber stamp in many, many organizations that I have seen. And also there are personality challenges across teams. You will see that in many open source uh, big projects where two teams working in two geographies or from coming from two completely different uh, culture, they have a very huge ego and they, uh, they clashes while accepting each other's code. So uh, to avoid all this problem, very recently was exploring options to automate the entire code review cycle and make the whole process more efficient. And uh, then I was searching all over the internet and saw that code rabbit uh, pull request reviews on GitHub more often than any other tool. So I started experimenting with it and uh, very soon uh, I found that it elevated my code quality while significantly reducing the time needed for manual reviews. And uh, till now my usage of code rabbit, I'm pretty satisfied with the result. So I got all these below features from code rabbit. Number one is line by line code change reviews and suggestion that can be directly committed from the github pr ui and then there's a free and open source tier you can bind to your github or gitlab repo and enjoy ai code reviews it is free if your project is built in the open that is if you are running an open source project and uh, it has an ai driven learning feature that adapts to your team's coding practices and learning from user interactions to provide very customized or tailored feedback for your code reviews. And all the learnings are stored in a learnings.txt file that others uh, users of the repo can be benefited from. And then it offers in-depth code analysis that goes beyond basic syntax checks, detecting deeper issues like security risk and performance inefficiencies and opti other optimizations that you can bring in in your code. And it has continuous reviews of all the pull requests, including incremental commits, and verifies the impact of the PR on the overall code base and identifies any missing changes. And you can ask any question on your code base directly to CodeRabbit because it's a uh, intelligent chatting that you will get with CodeRabbit. And the more you chat, the smarter it gets. Also, CodeRabbit will validate the PR against the linked issues of the PR and identifies any other related issues. This is a huge time saver for large code bases where each of your PR may be linked to multiple issues. And uh, CodeRabbit is language agnostic, so compatible with all programming languages. And then the icing on the cake, you don't need linters anymore because CodeRabbit integrates with a whole host of linters. And CodeRabbit is very easy to integrate with platforms like uh, GitHub and GitLab. So it scales very well for larger projects. And then uh, it has a very smart review skipping process. What that means is that by default, it will skip in-depth review for simpler changes, for example, typo fixes and so on, or when the changes look good for the most part. So right now, I will show you some examples of how CodeRabbit is helping me to make the code review cycle smooth and fast. All right, this is an open source project in GitHub, Minefield. It's uh, pretty well maintained and pretty active. Uh, right now, they have updated it just two days before. So I'm looking at this particular PR uh, in that uh, GitHub repo. So here you can see this is one of the example of CodeRabbit is helping you to uh, create a good summary and walkthrough of the code. So you can see the summary by CodeRabbit, the new features introduced a parallel processing for queries, enhancing performance and efficiency, added a configurable max concurrency. Then there's bug fixes. It summarizes that and also the documentation updated command line interface to include a flag for setting max, uh, max concurrency. And this is on the same repo. Now, this is only about the technical walkthrough. So here CodeRabbit says that the changes involve updates to the make file and uh, go source file in the CMD leaderboard directory. The make file now specifies a binary output rather than compiling all packages. 
in the go file concurrency handling is enhanced in the run method yeah so it's just going technically uh just taking you through the changes that this peer was about so basically uh, this walkthrough will give you a detailed file by file explanation of the changes so right now you can see that uh, these were the files that were uh, changed in this pull request and they uh, just generated code rabbit automatically generated this table and uh, each of the file there is a change summary so it's absolutely great for anybody coming new to the project or even a senior engineer who is working on this project for a longer time to take a very quick one minute view of the entire changes in the pull request and believe me being a software engineer i know how difficult it is when you are reviewing uh, four to five different peers in a day and you have to go through so many changes of files and ask the uh, the relevant developers uh, during those review process and then you also have these uh, sequence diagram and just as the name says this diagram will give you a sequence summary of this pr and it's super useful for both who is reviewing it and also for the next person who will take up the next issue depending on these pr and then this example will show you the chat with your PR feature with code rabbit. So here as a developer, you will ask question on your PR across the code base and code rabbit will answer it. So here, for example, am I, uh, the user is asking, am I using it directly? I could have uh, shown this was updated. So the property on the struct is used except during instantiation when that value is supplied as a default can you point out the offending code and then the code rabbit answers upon reviewing the usage of so and so and so and so classes it appears that uh, time since last message is indeed used directly in the instantiation of this class okay so it's just a continuous uh, back and forth messaging is going on with code rabbit and uh, so this feature is just really awe inspiring uh, because uh, you are directly referring to the PR, also referring to the entire code base, and you are asking your question on the PR before uh, finally approving it. Awesome. And as you can see here, the code rabbit is actually suggesting some solution based on the developer question, and then, then the developer actually implements the suggested uh, solution and then comes back and informs code rabbit. And then again, Code Rabbit uh, evaluates based on the implemented solution. So here, Code Rabbit says, and this is after the implemented solution. Thank you for the update. After reviewing the amended code, uh, it's clear that the nudge if no message seems field is now being utilized effectively within the uh, struct, specifically during the instantiation of the handler. Uh, this addresses the previous concern about potentially redundant uh, and confusion code. Uh, the updated approach ensures that the uh, this class field uh, serves a clear purpose aligning with the intended functionality of the nudge sms lambda great job on making these adjustment uh, the yeah this so this is awesome you can just uh, do question answering get suggestion implement that and then again come back to a code rabbit and show your implemented solution and it will suggest uh, further steps based on that and here is another example where code rabbit will learn feature that adapts to my team's coding that is every team and every repository will have some practices and code rabbit will learn that from user interactions to provide tailored customized feedback to your peer so here for example you can see that uh, this is a peer and uh, code rabbit is saying considering artemis repositories code format uh, rule that wildcard imports should be used when four or more classes are imported from the same package it's recommended to use a wildcard import for uh, so and so due to the number of domain classes imported and then the developer says no we changed that now we want to get rid of the star imports uh, and immediately code rabbit learns that and says understood i will remember this uh, preference for explicit imports over wildcard imports in the artemis project for future reviews thank you for your clarification awesome and then this is a beautiful example of how code rabbit verifies your pr for potential error so check out this statement from code rabbit uh, that is um, the shell script output indicates that there is a reference to the old method 
name git handler in soenso file this confirms that not all references to the method were updated following its renaming uh, so uh, this oversight could lead to a compilation error or runtime issue if not addressed and then it also gives the analysis chain the re renaming of get handler to bg handler in the router struct changes the methods accessibility and usage ensure that all references to this method throughout the code base are updated according to avoid breaking changes beautiful and another great feature i wanted to show you is about issue validation so right now i'm looking at this particular pull request on this um, repository resolute and uh, what uh, this feature will do is it will check your pr against the linked issues so uh, this is what it's doing right now uh, so this is the objective of the uh, this is the tab table that it's giving connecting with your linked issues so for example the first one implement a switch wallet feature within the wallet module uh, it gives a switch it gives a uh, issue number whether it's addressed or not it puts a tick mark and if it is not addressed it will put a question mark and also the corresponding explanation so in this case uh, the issue was ensured the security of the switch functionality to prevent unauthorized access and uh, the code changes do not explicitly mention security measures so this is one unresolved issue looks like now, although this is connected with this peer and this is another one but the rest of the issues are resolved in this peer not only that actually code rabbit will help you find uh, potential connected issues so uh, code rabbit has a configured knowledge base and then it will uh, for each of the peer it will search its configured knowledge base to potential issues that may be relevant for this particular peer and then it will automatically connect it and notify you all right so that was about this video do check out their site and sign up you will get a 14 day free trial without any credit card and then just two click sign up and connect it with your github or gitlab and uh, if you are a developer or senior developer doing a lot of uh, merge request or pull request in a day or uh, uh, approval of the peers it will make your life really really easier i have seen it i have experienced it it's just beautiful uh, yeah so check it out and uh, see you in the next video